So one of the things that you always need to do is when you set up your easel, you're setting up your studio, even in this classroom. So I want to feel, we, do you mind sitting in the, in the chair so you're a little bit higher? Yeah. And Myrna, you wanted the side with chin up poses. Okay, we'll do one. Okay. And then you can tilt your head toward that door. Tilt it a little bit more so I see more. Yeah, there you go. All right, so anytime, like if this were a 20-minute drawing, we start out with the gesture, okay? This is the orbital plane. I'm going to draw this really big. Okay, see how I've used my whole sheet of paper? Okay, this is my idea of where the head is. I'm going to reduce my proportion a little bit and constrain it. That's going to be more where it is. And one of the really critical things in grasping this is feeling that underplane of the jaw. See this change of value, those of you that can see it right here, that's the back of her skull. So when you're drawing from the back of the figure, you have to look for things like that in the hair. Actually, I should have asked her to pull that hair up. She's got a long neck, so I'm going to exaggerate it some. See how I didn't stop because my easel stopped? I don't know what's going to happen down there later, but... Okay. So see how we're beginning to get that? The only thing I didn't get, I don't know how I it. I got involved with the arm. It's feeling the back. Okay. So we already know the head's tilted? What tells us that? Yeah, this triangle under here. It's this triangle right under here. It says plateau under the chin. The orbital plane is sloped. And I'm showing where the back of the head is. If she were sitting upright, the back of the head would be higher. So I haven't even gotten into any features yet. But what is that, two minutes worth of drawing? See how I'm not taking my charcoal off the page? That nose comes, I don't believe it, but this is what it does. See how I tried to draw the nose out here? I've got the eye right here. I don't believe it, but I stopped myself and I saw what it does. And only you right in here can see it. That nose shoots right mm -hmm. out of the lid of the eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do that, but it does do it here. It's not what it's supposed to do. It's not what it's supposed to do. Which then tells me this needs to be changed. And there, I'm just going to use my hand. Here comes the nose. So you can use all your tools. Base it here, including the wings, the darker value. That's one of the joys of using charcoal.
then that chin, you know, do a plumb line. That chin projects out farther than the nose and farther than the lips. The tendency is going to be to want to put it under it because that's where it's mm -hmm. supposed to be. But she's thrown forward. When she's thrown forward, everything tilts. It's like it's like a box. If you turn it on angle, all of this down here that was here gets thrown forward. So this is going to be out here. Much to my surprise, so this is going to come out. That lower lip projects out farther. Now, see what a difference that makes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now I'm going to move this a little bit. Now the other thing that's a really strong indicator of where the head is, is the ear, in this case. So I'm going to throw a horizontal line to, from the bottom of the earlobe across her form and see where it lands, and it lands about right here. So the ear is this low. The reason I'm talking about the ear is I've kind of set up a lot of things now. As I was doing this plane under here, I was moving toward the ear. So, to find out where left to right the ear is in proportion, I should stand back. See, I didn't take my charcoal off the page. From here down to here, finding my way. And the angle of that ear is like this. I don't see much of it. need to be farther back. I'm not sure. Maybe not. You see this change of value right down through here? Mm -hmm. I put my finger here, you can see it better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You all know what that is. Matt knows what it is. Tell him what it is, Matt. The sternum. Right. Snooze, you lose. Well, I, you I didn't want a long explanation. Indicating that the <laughs> trapezius okay. there, I wasn't no. sure. Yeah, okay. okay. So this is real important because it helps plant the neck. And now, you know, kind of toward the end here. I'm going to deal with the hair. But you see how prior to that, we're talking all structure and shapes? I want to make sure I feel that back. It's more important than the hair. Top of her head is flat. See how that flatness helps even throw this mm -hmm. forward more. And her hair projects up really high past the skull. This is all a little darker there. It's a little darker. There. Thank you. Any 
questions? Can you sharpen the tip of the earth charcoal? Uh, just by using it, it sharpens. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if you look at it, it's actually got really long planes on it that are flat. Yeah. Good, yes. Jacqueline. Yeah. That's good. Would you develop the eye? Sure. So to do that, I need to be a little bit more careful with the nose. Now, I'm going to do it kind of in a little bit of a reverse fashion. I'm going to take out some of the light. I don't usually do this. This is new for me to be doing it that way. Okay, so you always say to yourself, if this is here, then this is here. The nose is there. The eyelid, the eyelashes are obstructing some. The brow, it's right in there. This will move back some, this will move forward some. So what I'm looking at are, for one thing, the eyebrow itself is really profoundly fundamental to the shape of the eye because it courses along the orbital opening, the, the bone, mm -hmm. the frontal bone. This part of it originates right under the bone, and then we don't see it so much in this perspective, but as it travels across the bone, it then drops back down, and the brow is, goes underneath the bone a little bit, and travels along the edge, then it travels down into the orbit. And one thing she's got going on here, she's got a really profound shadow right under here. So I'm going to take that out. So what I've created is the orbital plane. And the upper lid, it's a good question, Matt, because I wanted, that was actually some of the things I wanted to talk about here. So the lashes come out and project not as individual um, marks, but as a shape. And then the, the eye itself is contained within a fold. The eyelid is about an eighth of an inch thick, and it folds over the eyeball. So it, when you look at it in profile like this, it actually projects past the eyeball. So if this is where the lid is, then her eyeball is right in here. And this is light right to there. So her eyeball is right in there. And this projects a little bit farther out here. And then it comes down to join the cheekbone. And the lower lid, the lashes project out from the edge of it. So this is going to be more right in through there. You, would you also address the hollow underneath the zygomatic arch? Okay. So you see how I, I just use my finger to lighten the bottom half of the iris, which is the colored part of the eye. The top third of it is darker because the eyelashes project out like an awning and they always cast a shadow. If somebody looks really weird, it's because they don't have upper eyelashes. It makes them look a little alien. Wait, oh, the zygote of this hollow right here? You mm -hmm. see this? Okay, yeah. so you see this value change right in here? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. That's, the, that's, what Matt, that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just going to address it by figuring out where it is. It's to the right of the eye. 
It comes just below the nose. I'm going to draw out the rough shape of it. It's kind of a diamond shape. And I'm going to fill it in. a little bit of value Does that do it for you? Mm -hmm. It's really just about, this is a little crude. There are a lot of refinements that can be made. I may have made her too long this way. I'm not really sure because I'm not standing back. But this is a good way to start any portrait. So one of the things I can do now is I can lighten this a little bit. There's a triangle right in here. Lighten it a little bit. That helps give it some of that stretch. All right, any other questions? My geniuses? Can you do the upper lip so we can see sure. the lights on it? <clears throat> This? Talking about yeah, yeah. No, yeah. it's this light right here and it's the direction of this plane. Okay. It's a lot of it's in context too. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean we see we see this. We mm -hmm. see the ear really low. Right. You know, there there are a lot of things that are telling us that it's I have about. a question. Okay. Is the tilt on her head looking at the model? The same as it was when you began? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. And for me, it doesn't really matter because, like, all the marks I put on here, uh -huh. I'm willing to change. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with that model. Okay. Yeah, because there's a lot. You're settling into her position. Oh, yeah, position. With, exactly. Uh, and that's a good point to make, too, that... Um, See, I made a mistake right here. This needs to come back. Um, yeah, it's actually. As the model sits in the pose, they s really sit more into it, and that's where you have to go. Just to let yourself. And in, in the beginning of the pose with the tilt of the head, more than it is now. It was much more expressive, and if you want to catch that expressiveness, you have to rely what on a photo, what? rather than settle into the pose. What? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. I, I, okay. I, I'll answer you, Matt. I just like don't get okay. what you're asking. All right. <laughs> the beginning of the pose, right. when the head was more pitched. Oh, it was more pitched. Okay. Yeah, it 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 gave it more. Well, that of an explains some of these shifts I'm having to make in here. Yeah. Okay. An expressive uh, thing that well, if you wanted to get. No, you stuff. don't have to rely on a photograph. You just tell the model to tilt. Go back. Tilt. 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 Go ahead and tilt a little bit, Troy, uh, toward the door. Yeah. Yeah. You just tell them to do. It. We can't do that in class because mm -hmm. you have you know 20 other people that are. Mm -hmm attached to their drawings, okay. you know. But when you're working with somebody individually, or, you know, if it's a real problem in class, you can always tell me, but the deal is mostly, to me, is to travel with the model. I mean, I, I had to paint, that's too far back now, I had to paint a man this year that when, he, he wanted to sit for his painting, and um, he would fall asleep. <laughs> and 
Um, I had done a couple of studies, which really helped, but he would take a break, or, I mean, he'd be sitting, I'd say, just go ahead and relax. And he'd be like this in the chair. <laughs> and I am not exaggerating. I didn't take a picture of him like that, but, and it's a guy, you know, it's a man sitting in a chair like this in the painting. But when he got like that, um, granted, I've reached my 10,000 hour threshold. Um, I just looked for color and plane changes, and I had enough going on in my painting that I just grabbed that information rather than directional information. Okay, so what else does this drawing need? Anything? A shoulder looks seemingly up a little bit. It high. does, doesn't it? Let's see where it is. going to be more in here. I mean, if I were taking it further, mm -hmm. I would do things to it. And if that were the case, I would probably, I would change this curved line. This is my idea of it. Mm -hmm. What actually happens here is it's a straight line because the cheek is obstructing my view. Mm -hmm. And that kind of straight down to here. Mm -hmm. See how that helps push the Absolutely. nose behind? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then I'd see it goes up this way. Yeah, you just keep playing with it. You, I mean, Amazing. another thing, is, of, of course, <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bit of a value change right in here at the temple. Mm -hmm. And when I put that in, I see that I could do more with the hair. And I keep wondering about the ear. Yeah, the ear's higher. You know, you just keep, un until you have your drawing, you know? I mean, I have this drawing. I, I, I own this drawing now. You know, as much as it owns me, I'm with it. I like it. Mm -hmm. But I think now the ear's too high. So that's what happens. You start mucking with it too much, you mm -hmm. start losing what's going on. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to our videographer, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Dutch Queen. Anything else? Do you mind that we're videotaping? Does anybody have a problem with that? No. We will be on YouTube.